Today we're going to be checking out GitHub Actions and how we can get set up quickly using a mixed template along with a minimal Linux hosting environment for deployments. In this tutorial, we're going to take one of the Service Tech templated web applications and get hosting, HTTPS, along with automated continuous integration for developing a new Service Tech application. Getting these basics set up early so you can always be testing and deploying your latest changes saves a lot of time in the long run. However, it can be tricky trying to work out how to implement it in the very beginning. To help address this, we've made a new set of mixed templates centered around GitHub Actions for automating our continuous integration or CI environment. Other Git platforms have different solutions for CI runners, but GitHub have made GitHub Actions a great way to automate testing and deployment of your application that is free for open source and comes with a generous allowance even with a GitHub free account. GitHub Actions are configured via a YAML file in your repository, so the template we've created is designed to work with ServiceStack project templates so they can be added at the beginning of your project or with an existing application. The mixed template we'll be using today focuses on a minimal hosting environment to deploy your prototypes or low traffic applications on a single Linux server. This approach is more suitable for solo developers or small teams prototyping new ideas. It's not designed to scale to highly available large scale solutions, but it is cheap to host, quick to set up and more portable when you're first getting started. Alternatively, serverless platforms are also generally cheap or free, but have their own trade-offs and you'll be tied to a vendor early on. A couple of prerequisites before we get started. Locally on your machine, you'll need the following installed. A .NET 5 or later SDK, the Service Stack X tool, along with Docker and Docker Compose. Links in the description for the full installation instructions, as well as a full write-up on this tutorial. Since we'll be using GitHub, we want to create a new repository for your application. When creating a repository, don't select any of the generated files and leave the repository empty. And now on your local machine, we want to create a new Service Tech application using xnew. We can make this Service Tech application with the command xnew space web space web app. Once created locally, we can initialize git, add the files, and push to our new GitHub repository. So far, our application is not yet using GitHub Actions, but we can add the required files using the Service Tech mix tool and add the templates build and release-ghr-vanilla in the root of directory of your repository. The build template tells GitHub Actions to build and test your application. This can catch any errors that you might have missed when you're running build or test locally. The release-ghr-vanilla template tells GitHub Action to package and deploy your server stack application to a single Linux server. It does this via SSH remote access to run Docker Compose on the remote Linux server. Now that these files are generated, we can add them to Git and push them to your GitHub repository. Once pushed up, have a look in Actions and you'll see straight away that a build job is running. The build job will run every time you commit code and push it to your repository. The release job will only run when you create a new release in GitHub. So far, we've created a new Service Stack application and have it building and testing using GitHub Actions. Now we want to see our application running. To do this, you'll need a few things. You'll need to have a domain that you can manage and create A records for, a Linux host with public IP, dedicated SSH key access, and Docker and Docker Compose installed. You'll also need to enable improved container support in your GitHub account or organization. However, in the future, this step shouldn't be needed, as this feature will be generally available. While testing these templates, we use DigitalOcean and their droplets, which are servers from about $5 a month. You can create a new droplet in their wizard, choose Ubuntu 20.04, Basic Plan, Regular SSD, and the $5 option. Choose your data center region, and select SSH access with a newly created key. Once the droplet's created, you'll want to enable floating IP for the server to give it a static IP address. Copy this new IP address and create a new subdomain A record pointing to the new server. By default, port 80 and 443 are open on our droplet, but if you're using another provider, you need to ensure that these ports are accessible, along with a port for SSH access. Next, we'll need to remote to our new droplet and install Docker and Docker Compose. See our write-up for links for these installation scripts. 
Once these are installed and up and running, we can copy over a file that came with the mix template, the nginx proxycompose.yaml file. Once copied over to the remote server, you can run docker compose f nginx proxycompose.yaml space up. This will run two containers in the attached mode so we can see their output. This will show what happens when our applications gets deployed, which we'll see shortly. Back to our GitHub repository, we'll need to create six secrets that are used in the release GitHub action workflow. These can be created in the GitHub repository settings via the web UI or via the GitHub CLI. The container repository personal access token or CRPAT is used to push our Docker image to the GitHub container repository. Personal access tokens can be created under the GitHub account settings, under the developer settings, and then personal access tokens. The CRPAT just needs read and write to the packages scope. The deploy host port username and key is for SSH access. The host can be your subdomain that you created for your A record. The port will be your SSH access port, generally port 22. The username and the key will be used for authentication. The deploy username is specifically the local username on the Linux server. The key is specifically your SSH private key. When setting up your Linux hosts, make sure you're using a new SSH key that isn't used for any other purpose. And lastly, you'll need an email to be used for Let's Encrypt. This is to automate the use of Let's Encrypt to issue our TLS certificates. This means if our app deployment has been correctly configured, the applications will be automatically hosted with HTTPS. Here I'm using the GitHub CLI to set our secrets for our repository. Now we can create the GitHub release. We do this by going to releases on the front of your repository, create new release, add a tag version and a title, and create a new release. Once the release has been published, in your actions, the release workflow will be triggered. The push to registry step will package our application into a Docker image and push it to the GitHub container repository. The deploy via SSH step will then call Docker Compose on our remote Linux server. The Nginx containers will then contact Let's Encrypt servers and generate your TLS certificate. Once generated, the Nginx proxy will then be hosting your application, and it will be available by the subdomain you created. We can actually deploy and host multiple applications here and only set up the server once. This makes it quick to have full CI deployments working from the very beginning of development. Here at ServiceStack, we have webtemplates.io hosting 16 of our templated applications on a $10 droplet with plenty of resources left over for more as we create them. For low request applications or prototypes, you would be able to host them on DigitalOcean for about 50 cents a month each. The idea is to give developers a good base to start with with minimal infrastructure. As your application hosting requirements might grow, your CI environment and Docker images can be more easily repurposed. We'll be making more templates with GitHub Actions, focusing on different deployment setups. So let us know which targets you would be most interested in seeing. I hope these mixed templates and this video was useful, and as always, thanks for watching.